everyone, it's Karen with the Us Please Paper Crafts, and this video is part of the Let's Get Organized YouTube Hop for Paper Crafters, where each month we focus in on a different item or area in our craft room and share our tips and ideas on how we store and organize those items. So please go and check out everyone else's videos that is participating in the YouTube Hop for this month, and I'll have a link to all of those videos or YouTube channels in the description below. Okay, so for the month of May, we're focusing in on ink pads and other coloring items in the craft room. So things like pens, markers, glitters, embossing powders. So anything that you can use to add color to your project. And I'm going to start off by talking about ink pads. So I just, uh, I've been changing the way that I store my ink pads after I moved. So I moved last year in August and I've been reorganizing my, my space since then and uh, trying to figure out what works for me, what doesn't work for me, and come up with uh, the right place to store everything and the right storage solution. And um, how I had this stored in my old craft room worked really awesome. Uh, but in my new craft room, it's really not working as well for me. So let me start off by sharing the storage solution that I used to use for the majority of my ink pads in my old craft room. I still use this storage solution. I just use it for the ink pads that I don't use as often. Okay, and that is this Iris Slim project case. This is the project case for eight and a half by 11 projects, so it doesn't fit 12 by 12 paper. But it's really awesome for all kinds of things that you have in your craft room. I store wood stamps, uh, Nuvo crystal drops, ink pads, stickles, uh, just all kinds of stuff will fit into these um, project cases. So they're really awesome. And this is how it comes. It's just an empty case and it's very, uh, then and you can store it either vertically or horizontally and it fits inside the calyx. So that's one of the really awesome things about uh, this case is that you can fit this into your calyx cubes. Okay, and then let me share with you this one. So um, one of the things I realized after I started using these slim project cases uh, was that there was a major problem with when you put stuff in here it didn't stay in place. And so I would put a whole bunch of stuff in here and then if you tilted it or turned it upside down, all the stuff would get jumbled because there is some space on the top. And so the things don't stay where you want them to stay. <laughs> so I got this idea to create divider inserts and I have a, a number of YouTube videos where I shared how to create the divider inserts. I'll put links to those videos in the description below, but I do have a video tutorial on how to create this uh, um, divider insert for the mini inks and so I have all of my little distress uh, mini cubes in here plus some extra ones down here and I would say the only downside to storing ink pads in these project cases is that uh, you can't really store them like this in a vertical fashion and what I find if you do this is that a lot of times the lid on the ink pad will come off and then you will end up having the ink pad dry out and get ruined it also will discolor your box, uh, the insert here, as you can see here. I had a problem where um, one of the ink pads linked all, linked all over. And so um, that would be my biggest um, negative with, the, with using these slim project cases for uh, ink pads. So the other issue that I have with storing my ink pads in these project cases is that I have them stored in my closet. And because I have to store them horizontally flat like this and I can't store them vertically, it makes it a little bit more challenging to get to the ink pads because I might have a whole stack of them, maybe like five or six cases stacked on top of each other. And if I want to get to the fourth case down here, I have to move all this stuff around uh, to get to it. And um, that's one of the things that I like to avoid. I want to be able to just go to where I have something and grab it and not have to move a bunch of stuff to get to what I need. And so that's one of the main reasons why I decided to change some of the uh, ink pad storage that I have. And I just recently got a new island for my craft room. I rearranged the furniture, I changed out some of the tables in my craft room and decided that I would go ahead and get an island for the metal. And uh, the island is two calyx units that are uh, four by two. And then I have the countertop on top. And uh, that's working out really well. It added a whole ton of storage to my craft room. And then it also gave me a place to put my ink pads. And I'm going to share with you some pictures of that. I'll do a video clip and talk a little bit more about how I have the new storage for the ink pads that I use more frequently that I want to have really close by and be able to really uh, get to easily. 
but I'm still going to use these project cases to store some of my older ink pads and the ones that I don't use as frequently. So things like these uh, ones here that are really, really old ink pads, and then also the, the little mini ones. I also have these here from Stampin' Up. These are craft inks. Uh, this is Stampin' Up and this is close to my heart. I don't really use these as often because these take a long time to dry, but they're really awesome if you want to uh, stamp on plastic or acetate or anything like that. And then I have my older distressed uh, inks here. I just had a few of these and then I switched over to just getting the mini ink pads. And then when the Distress Oxides came out, I got a whole bunch of those. <laughs> so, but I don't reach for these as often because I use the Distress Oxides more. But sometimes I still like to use these for, uh, depends on the project that I'm working on. And then I also have these uh, ones here. This is just miscellaneous small ink pads that are like the dew drops. And then these down here that are like smaller. And so um, these are all of the ink pads that I'm going to store in my closet. And... Um, the only disadvantage to that is going to be that it's, I have to go into the closet to get it and then I have to kind of struggle with uh, getting it if it's one on the bottom. <laughs> but I think I can deal with that for the ink pads that I don't use as often. One of the nice things about having these project cases though is that I can just grab this whole project case and bring it to my table and that way I can work with all of the inks in this project case. So it does make it convenient for, um, you know, if you put it into a container um, and then you can just take that whole container to your uh, workspace. So um, I'm just going to move this back over here. And I have this other project case out because I was working on a layout the other day. And I thought I would share this with you because it was right there on my table. Um, but this is another way that you can store things. And this is the Nebo Crystal Drops. And you can see here that I created the divider insert for this as well. And then the really cool thing about the Nebo Crystal Drops and the Stickles, which is the the glitter glues, is that I can store it on my bookshelf like this. And then that way, all of the bottles are upside down and it's super easy to access because I could just grab them when I want right off my shelf. So I love being able to, to store things in these project cases if I can store, store it vertically. Uh, it's so much more functional than having to store it horizontally, but unfortunately for my ink pads, um, I don't feel comfortable storing those like you know upright like this because I've had so many issues with the lids falling off. Okay so that is my ink storage. That was how I stored most of my inks, my ink pads in my old house. I do have a whole bunch of Stampin' Up! inks. I used to be a Stampin' Up! demonstrator a long time ago. So I have a whole set of Stampin' Up! inks that are in my closet. <laughs> and I have those up on the wall in my old craft room but I have not decided what I'm going to do with those yet and so I didn't actually put them uh, up where I had them before and uh, I still need to figure out exactly what I'm going to do with those. <laughs> so if you've seen some of my other organization videos, you probably heard me talk about reference guides and I have reference guides for different types of things in my craft room like paper pads, embossing folders, and also mixed media. This is one I shared recently. This is the um, the shimmers paints that I have and um, I just uh, created these little reference guides that I can use. I also have one for punches and then I started a reference guide for my decorative scissors. So I have all different types of reference guides that I use uh, in my craft room. And one of the things I've been wanting to do for so many years that I have just not really sat down and spent the time to do is to create a swatch, an ink swatch for all of my ink pads. Uh, but I did actually uh, start the process of uh, doing this and I started with my oxides, which are the ones I use the most. And so here I went ahead and I created these really awesome swatch cards with all of my inks that I have. These are all my Distress Oxides. And how I did this was I just cut out some, um, using some lightweight cardstock that I pick up from Sam's Club. And I'll put a link up here in the description below to where you can find that. Uh, but it's just a really light and expensive cardstock that I use for all my organization projects. And I just cut two, stri two inch strips and then I use a tag punch and I turn it into a tag. So let's see, I'll grab my tag punch here so you can see. You can just insert any length of a two inch strip of paper and turn that into a tag. And so this is a four and a quarter, um, four and a quarter by two. And I think that's a pretty good size for, the, um, for my ink swatches. And then uh, the other thing that I did was I used some of these post-it 
like little tabs that are removable. And then I just put labels here for what type of ink this is. So I haven't started my distress inks yet, but I will go ahead and make a card for every distress ink that I have. And then what I do is on the back of the card, I have the color here. Um, I don't know if you can see that. Let's see if I can bring it up here. So I know exactly what color is on each one of these cards. So I started that project. I'll put a link to where you can find these two. You can probably find these at Office Supply, places like Office Depot and Staples, but also online like Amazon. Um, and uh, I created this one, but I haven't actually created any of the swatches yet. But my plan is that I would create um, a swatch for all of my black inks, all of my other inks. Uh, for example, you know, we have like the Versamark ink and uh, just put examples of, of the different inks that I have. And then we have Ulta New, I have some Close to My Heart, the Dew Drops, Hero Arts, Nuvo, uh, Prima, Simon, and Stampin' Up. So uh, most of this, I only have a few. Like I might have, I don't know, three of the Nuvo, and I have like maybe five Hero Arts. I don't have very many of those, but I just went ahead and put it into categories like that because I thought it would be easier. Uh, when I go to search for that ink pad, I know kind of where it is. And then the other swatches that I want to make are the ones for the embossing powders. And um, I never use my embossing powders, like hardly ever, uh, unless I have something very specific that I wanted to do that I think, you know, that maybe a gold embossing powder, clear or white. I don't really tend to, to reach for all of the colored embossing powders that I have. And I think that's mostly because I don't know what they're going to look like when I emboss them. <laughs> So I think if I spent some time making some swatch cards with all of the embossing powders that I have and all of the texture paste that I have and all these different uh, coloring items that I have in my craft room, then I would probably be more inclined to use those because I would have a good reference for what it's going to look like once I use it on my project. Okay, so those are the reference guides that I have started. <laughs> I have so many organization projects and um, all of them are half done. So I think that's okay. If you have, if you're organizing your craft room and you are working on an organization project and you don't finish it and you move on to something else, don't feel bad about it. Any organization you do is good. It's just that I think organization projects never end. It's just going to always continue. So the best advice I could give you is to start as soon as you start collecting craft supplies, <laughs> get started with creating things like these ink swatches and reference guides. Um, because it's, it's, it's a lot easier if you do it as you go along collecting more and more crafting supplies. If you wait to do it, like um, for me, I've been crafting for over 30 years, um, it's kind of overwhelming to try to do some of these organization projects. And uh, I get kind of bored and tired of it after a while. <laughs> if you sit down and you have like 100 ink pads to swatch, um, it's going to be exhausting. But if you only had 10, you know, then you would get get that done really quickly and if you did if you kept it up and uh you know updated it as you brought new crafting supplies into your craft room uh, then it wouldn't be so overwhelming and it's so much of a challenge to get your craft room organized so i wish somebody would have given me that advice a long time ago <laughs> because uh then i wouldn't be having such a hard time now <laughs> but if you're in the situation that i'm in where you have a lot of crafting supplies and it's it's not really well organized you can just spend uh, an hour a week or you know 30 minutes a day or just set aside some time to do organization in your craft room and uh, over time eventually you'll start to see results um, uh, sometimes i think people get overwhelmed because they try to do too much at one time but uh, if you just want to like uh, write a list of all the things you want to organize and just start checking them off like just maybe work on one project a week or you know even 15 minutes a day uh, you will see uh, some progress in your organization. Okay, so while we're talking about ink pads, let me just show you this storage that I have right here. I don't even know where I picked this up. It might have been a gift from somebody. Um, somebody might have given me this for my birthday. My, it might have been one of my sisters. And it's this really cute pail. And it's got the, the color that's in my craft room. I love this color. And it's also got these really pretty leaves and little beads on the side. It's this uh, bucket. And um, so what I ended up doing here was I have all of my blending brushes stored here. And then um, this storage was a little bit too tall. So what was happening was 
I would put the blending brushes in there and they would they were like way down here and I wasn't really able to see and I would have to pick them all out and put them back in trying to see which one I wanted to use on my project and so I ended up going into um, I have a bunch of these glass um, pebbles I don't know what to call these this is the this is the little pebbles you put when you're doing flower arrangements and uh, at the Dollar Tree they have this with the floral arrangement items and I picked up some bags of these little um, I don't know what you call these things but they're little uh, glass stones and I just added a whole bunch of those to the bottom of this pail and then in the middle here I have a mason jar in the middle where I have all of these smaller blending brushes in the middle so they kind of stay in one place this is a really cool way that you can uh, make a store solution and keep things organized is by putting a container inside a container. <laughs> so I think it's pretty awesome. And I love the way that this turned out. Not only that, it's pretty. <laughs> so if you, if you want to, so I picked up these blending tools from Amazon and I'll put a link to where you can find these online. But I've been using these and I absolutely love them. They're so much fun to work with. And uh, you don't have to worry too much about as long as you um, kind of stick to close to the color, um, like this is pinks, so I just use this blending brush for all the pinks, and then use this one for red and this one for orange. So as long as you stick to um, a um, ink pad that's got a similar color, uh, then it works out pretty good. <laughs> or you make sure you really clean it good by just rubbing it on some, I usually just rub it on a paper towel or on a piece of cardstock to get rid of all of the excess ink that's on there. And I use these mainly for my Distress Oxides. Okay, I'm gonna put that back over there where I had it stored. And um, that's just, uh, I have that right on the right side of my workspace where I do my crafting. And then the other thing I have here is, I have this storage here and I have been, I had this since, uh, I think I've had this for over a year and a half. And um, I can't figure out, I couldn't figure out how to use it. <laughs> I have tried to store all kinds of stuff in this. And it's the 360 storage tower from scrapbook.com. And I'm going to kind of try to see if I can tilt it here. So it is, it has tiers. It has four different tiers. And it does have adjustable shelves. Um, I like that it spins around but the shape of it these wedge shaped or triangular shaped shelves make it really difficult to figure out what things you can store there <laughs> and um, i finally think i came up with uh, what i can put here that's going to be the best thing and that is the i have these bigger blending brushes which i wasn't even using because i had them in a drawer and i kind of forgot about them uh, but this is going to be really cool because it'll be right on my desk and when I want to do some bigger projects, I'll have these larger blending brushes. And uh, this set, I think, has, let's see, two, four, six, eight. It has 12 different colors. So it doesn't have as many colors as the brushes, but um, still quite a big selection. Like you have two greens, two blues, orange and yellow, um, two different reds. So, um, yeah, I think it's going to be really cool to have this close by. And then on the top here, I have some embossing powder from Nuvo. Um, one of the things is I can't store anything really tall here because where this is on my workspace is underneath where my camera setup is. And if I put anything that's too tall there, when I spin it around, it hits it. So, and the other thing that I have on here are some embossing paste. So I have some Nuvo glitter, glimmer embossing paste and then some Vicky Putin embossing paste and these are just different items that i had in my craft room that i want to use more and so i decided to put them here where they'll be really close by so if i want to work on um, using some texture paste or embossing i can have that right by close to where i'm working okay so now let me share the new ink pad stores that i have and this is in the island that i have in the middle of my room and i have a uh, calyx unit here and in two of the cubbies I put the uh, ink pad organizer from Organize and More, and I'll put a link to where you can find that online. It holds 36 ink pads and it fits into the calyx. And so I have all of my distress inks plus all of the uh, frequently used inks in uh, two of these. Okay, so another new storage solution that I have in my craft room is a new insert from Ikea that is made for the calyx. And this is a wine holder insert. It has nine cubbies. 
And uh, what's really awesome about it is it fits the fridge storage bin from uh, Dollar Tree perfectly. So I can fit nine of the fridge storage bins. And this is where I have things stored like my ink refills, the alcohol inks. I have uh, also some uh, paint daubers and distress stains and just anything that um, is related to ink. I have it stored there, but uh, the only downside to this storage solution is that uh, you really can't store anything tall. So I have uh, in another place in my craft room, I have uh, some uh, sprays like ink sprays and the bottles are too tall to store in there. <laughs> I wish I could store some of my ink sprays in here, but unfortunately they don't fit. And so I'm just going to have to um, have those stored in another place in my craft room, unfortunately. But I think that this uh, wine holder storage is really awesome. And if you have a Calyx unit, it fits perfectly into one of the cubbies. Okay, and then the cubby right next to that, I have a acrylic drawer set that comes from Michaels. And I'll put links to all of these organization products in the description below. So if you want to check those out, you'll have a, a way to go and find them. Uh, but this is three uh, drawers. It's a three drawer unit. And what I found is if you really struggle with it, you can kit, you can fit two of these, one stacked on top of the other. Uh, but uh, it's really hard to uh, do that. <laughs> I did manage to finagle uh, mine in there into one of the cubbies. I took off the, uh, there's like rubber feet. I took those off of both the top and the bottom drawer sets. And uh, after much um, maneuvering, I was able to actually get both of them in there. And then with the other one, I did try really hard to fit two in there, but I just couldn't do it. <laughs> I don't know why, but uh, the second set of drawers I had, it just wouldn't go in there. So what I decided to do instead was I just have one set of drawers on this cubby, and then I'm storing three of the cases, the ink pad cases, the uh, Project Slim cases, uh, in that uh, space. Okay, so in this three drawer acrylic unit, I have in the top drawer my shimmer paints. And I used to have these stored in one of the Slim project cases. So I just pulled the whole thing out. I had a, a divider insert that I created for it. I just pu pulled that whole thing out and put it into the acrylic drawer. And in the second drawer, I have uh, more shimmers paints. And then in the last drawer, I have some acrylic paint. So I really love the idea of having my shimmer paints and acrylic paints in these drawers where I can easily access uh, those because I want to be able to use them more often on projects. And uh, I really love that I have this new storage solution, this new island that's in my craft room, and I can have all of these things that I would like to use more often stored really close to my workspace. Okay, and then on this side, I have a set of two drawers. This is another insert from Ikea that's meant to fit into the calyx. And in the top drawer, I have some ink pads and also some other stamping tools. And then in the bottom drawer, I have uh, my embossing gun plus some frequently used embossing powders like clear and white, and then my embossing buddy, and then also some stamp blocks. Just anything that you would use for stamping and embossing. Okay, so that's all I have on ink pads, ink refills, and everything to do with ink and embossing powders. And uh, the next thing I wanna talk about is pens and markers. So I have a couple of different places in my craft room where I store pens and markers. The first place is in my tool cart. I have a Razcog cart from Ikea. And in the top of my Razcog cart, I have four of these little um, containers. This comes from the Target, and it's a part of the uh, Room Essentials brand. It's the Y Weave Baskets, and it's the really small ones. So I have four of these, and then I have one of them for, this is mostly black ink pens, outliners, uh, just different uh, ones like that, and also ink pens that I use in my Cricut when I want to write with my Cricut. And then I have some gel pens, and then these are gel pens, but they're glitter gel pens. And then the last one here, I have more gel pens, and also these are the ones that you can erase. It's a pen that's erasable. These are called friction pens. So I have all of those stored on the top of my cart. And then the other place that I have uh, pens and markers is right to the right side of my workstation. Um, I have not really been using a lot of these markers because um, they were so far away from me in my old craft room. But now that I have this new craft room, my layout's totally different. And so these are much more accessible 
And so on the top of the storage unit that I have, I have two of these metal bins. They're actually utensil caddies that I got from Kohl's uh, when Kohl's was having their summer clearance. And um, they work perfectly for my Copic markers. I have them stored on the side, but then when I want to use my Copic markers, I can just take that whole bucket with me to my workspace and uh, use it. So I really love how I have my Copic stored. I can have them stored on their side and then still be able to use them. Um, and uh, it's really, I, I love that storage. I've had that for a really long time. Okay, and then under that, I have some uh, pen holders, and those came from the Michaels uh, cubes they used to have a long time ago, and I have four of those, and in those, I have a whole bunch of different markers and pens, and uh, have them by different categories, and uh, so yeah, so that's where I have all of my pens and markers. Then on top of that, I also have some watercolor markers. And uh, I think that's pretty much everywhere in my craft room that I have pens and markers stored. So I just really only have those two locations. And uh, my tool cart is uh, stored in the middle of my craft room next to my island. But when I'm working on a project, I can just roll it over to my work table and it can be close uh, by wherever I'm working. And what's really nice about having a cart is that sometimes I might want to work on my dining room table, which is just um, right outside of my craft room. I can roll this whole cart right over there to that table. So uh, I think it's really awesome to have a mobile storage solution for your most frequently used tools because then you can move it around uh, if you decide you want to craft in a different place. Sometimes uh, where I'm filming is really messy and <laughs> I need to do something. I can just you know go to an empty uh, space in my craft room or in my dining room and work there. Okay, so the last thing that I want to share with you guys was how I store my glitter. And because I don't, I don't really use glitter that much, I love the way that it looks, but it's so messy. <laughs> so I tend not to use it much, uh, but sometimes I do like to work with glitter. And so uh, I do have that stored in an Ikea Calyx unit in my closet, and it's in a drawer that's in there. So I'll go ahead and take a video clip of that and share it with you here so you can see how I have my glitter stored. And um, it's, it's still really easily accessible. It's in three of the um, little fridge bins from, from the Dollar Tree. And I can just pull those fridge bins out and bring it over to my table. So I think one of the most important things that I've learned about organization is if you have to store things away in another location, in, an, in a closet or in another room, if you can put it into a, a container, a bin, a basket or something, uh, then you can just pull that whole container and bring it with you. So it, it makes it more accessible if you can uh, store it and um, make it easy for you to carry around your house. <laughs> so that's one of the things that I found works really well. If I don't have the space to store it right where I'm working, I can at least store it in the closet in a way that makes it easy to get to it and to bring it into my workspace. Okay, so I wanted to mention to everyone that we are going to be doing a craft room tour for June. It was originally scheduled for April, but I had several people uh, ask me if we could delay it for a couple of months because they were in the middle of redoing their rooms. And of course I had moved and I was not ready either. <laughs> so we went ahead and rescheduled it, but the craft room tours uh, for the Let's Get Organized Hop are scheduled to be, uh, uh, are scheduled for the June Hop. And it's the last Sunday in June at three o'clock. And so hopefully y'all come back and join us for that craft room tour and you can see uh, everyone's craft rooms. And I know people have been asking me for a long time to do a craft room tour. And I still have video footage where I did a craft room tour video of my old craft room in my old house. Uh, but I kind of lost track of where I put the files. And uh, But as soon as I do find that, I'm gonna to go ahead and edit it and put it up, even though it's an older craft room that I don't have anymore. I think it's still useful to show that to people so you can see kind of the progression of where I was and then where I am now. <laughs> Okay, so I just want to remind you guys to be sure to go check out everyone else's videos that is participating in this YouTube Hub so you can see how they store and organize their inks and other things. And uh, that's all I have for this video. So y'all take care. Hope y'all have an awesome weekend. And I hope to see you next time. Bye now. Hi, Miss Bella. What you doing? Oh. oh, okay. You want to say hi to the YouTube people? So we hadn't made a video in a long time, huh? <coughs> Not a long time, <coughs> I know. We've been busy, huh? <coughs> Y'all been sleeping a lot. <coughs> yeah.
sleep all day. <laughs> There's Lily Bell over there. Hey, Lily Bell. <laughs> Lily Bell's like, whatever. Bella's having a, having a temp temper tantrum. <laughs> Is it snap? She, she says she's probably fussing with me because she wants it. Because <laughs> I haven't videotaped her in a long time. Yeah, and she wants a treat. Is it treat time? Yes, it is. <laughs> okay, let me get, get you a treat. Hold on. Okay. Okay. Sit. Down. Good girls. Down, Lily Bell. Good job. All right, here's one for Bella. Here's one for Lily Bell. <laughs> there they go. <laughs> all right, well, that's all I have. Y'all take care. Hope y'all have an awesome weekend, and I hope to see you next time. Bye now.